Hello, everyone. Thanks for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Chin Sung. This is Manny. And we're going to talk about this deck that we talked about previously, the, the control deck. They're using white, red, a bit of blue. I like this hand a lot. We're probably going to bend the Ukin. Hmm. Um, just because I've got, I can't really bend a land. And while I would like to Narset discard Ugin and get an Ugin into play on turn six or seven off of the Elspeth Conqueror's death, I like that's. I'd rather just like make sure that I live to go ahead and get the Elspeth Conqueror's death. Hmm. Um, the Gadwick is really nice, but I really think I need to hit four. So, if this was a blue source, I would have kept the Gadwick. Just so you're aware, if this was a blue white source, I would have kept the Gadwick. Um, we're gonna go with a red source here, and this is gonna be a white source, and that's gonna be a blue source. Do you feel good about your hand? Um, against what he's probably doing, yes. Hmm. He's gonna try to mutate a bunch of stuff and probably maybe scoot swarm me to death. Who knows? Um, but. The fact that he just played this card um, tells me he's playing something a little off meta. Um, he could be, there are a number of things he could be doing to me here. I'm still gonna run the Narset. If I get counterspelled, then that's fine. Um, we're gonna just draw so that it replaces itself. Hmm. I'm expecting to see like migratory great horn, um, I'm expecting to see the migratory great horn scoots uh scoot swarm combo. Because I think Scoot Swarm, yeah, Scoot Swarm didn't get banned, so it was Omnath that got banned. So I'm expecting to see something like that. Well, looking at your hand now, what do you plan to cast next once it's your turn? Depends on what he does. Hey, look, oh. a perfect target for Elspeth Donker's death. not going to get anything off of this Elspeth Conqueror's death, but uh, this is going to be a white source. Sure. That's fine. It kills your guy and gets me my Narset back next turn. So that's perfectly okay. I'm gonna continue to just play lands. I don't have any proactive plan at this point right now, um, but there's also like a limited amount that he can do to me with me holding an Elspeth Cocker's death and getting a Narset back next turn probably. So, mm. um, that's fine. I guess, are you gonna mutate? There's really not, no, okay. Before you change your mind and mutate in a different, <laughs> in, in, in your second main phase, I'm gonna go ahead and kill that because that's that, that card. Okay, we get Narset, one loyalty. We'll keep the one that has five loyalty and we draw a card. Decline to discard anything. We'll play a third blue source. We don't need another land. And pass the turn. Defensive spell, which is nice. I'm not sure how effective it is at this juncture, but. make this a red source. Sure, why not? We'll keep this one, we'll draw another card. All right. I can't find a Gadwick or like a Bane Slayer or a Dream Trawler or something, but that's fine. Find more relevant defensive spells, keep things going. Drawing a Castle Arden Veil would be nice. I mean, to be fair, my my Ugin, my I have an Ugin and a Gadwick on the bottom, so sure, that's fine. I assume you're going to play lands. No. Huh. 
you're not going to play land. That's very interesting. Well, let's let's do this and see what happens. I might need to cast the Wrath. I guess I should have plussed first because there's no way that I'm going to let this die this turn. Do you have like a, a Roiling thingy? Okay, so you don't have the thingy, okay. Yeah, I should have. Would have been technically correct to use the plus one to cast the Elspeth Conqueror's death. Not sure it's gonna matter. Auspicious Starix, that's fine. I'm gonna mutate Parcel Beast onto it and get something up. Okay. Okay. Um, do I have enough mana to cast both? It's opponents, right? Yeah. Okay. So I need 10 to cast both. Do I have 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I do. Wow. That leave me two white horses that does. Excellent. All right. Let's see how you handle this. I have a dream drawler. Protected by an Elspeth Conqueror's death. So if you kill the dream trawler, if he goes after the dream trawler's turn, I'll probably just let it die because of the Elspeth Conqueror's death and the fact that I have an Arsid in play. But he's just going to cultivate, which I'm okay with. I'm not really sure what he's doing at the top end beyond a whole bunch of mutate stuff. He may have Genesis Ultimatum. Hmm. So I have to be careful about that. We might as well get a five loyalty Narset instead of a four loyalty Narset. Uh, and then we're going to draw a card to get X and extra power on my Dream Trawler. And then now that I drew that land, I think I am going to cycle this to get the extra point. Very good. And then next turn, the Gadwick should be lethal if he doesn't have a defense for the Dream Trawler. That doesn't count. All right, so he has Ugin at the top end. That's good to know. Um, he may have Genesis Ultimatum too. Um, Baby Godzilla doesn't die to Bone Crusher Giant, so we probably don't need this. Uh, Brazen Borrower. It's not so great against Baby Godzilla either uh, because I can bounce it, but the mutated guy still comes through. I guess it stops the mutate trigger, which is useful. Um, I definitely want the Dragon Fires, definitely want the Essence Scatters, I want the Neutralizes. Um, I may want Mystical Dispute against him, even though, well, he's playing a lot of ramp though. The card's gonna get invalidated really quickly. I definitely probably should be playing Cinderclasm because he's gonna play at least Scoot Scoot's one. So maybe I should be playing that. It's an answer to the Scoot Swarm thingy. I don't know. Maybe by the time that gets going, it's just not worth it. And I have Wrath, Ugin, and Ondu inversion. I have five answers. Hmm. Definitely want the extra Dream Trawler and the Bane Slayer Angel because I want to be able to counterattack in the air. Not really sure what he's going to bring in. He might bring in Counter Magic. I'm going to swap the Brazen Borrowers for a couple pieces of Counter Magic just because um, 
he could have Genesis Ultimatum on the top end, and I suspect he'll probably bring in some counter magic. I'm a little leery of having very limited answers to stuff that resolves uh, in a game where I'm on the draw. Hmm. Um, but we'll go ahead and try this. This is not a great hand on the draw, but I don't really think that um, a random six is going to be a whole lot better. As long as I have one defensive spell, I should be good, which I have a scry to find, and I just drew one. So if he doesn't have a baby Godzilla here... Okay, so he does have Lotus Cobra, so I definitely do want the... Uh, I definitely do want the... Um, the Cinderclasms. Hmm. I wasn't sure about this. If he cultivates here, uh, I'm just going to need to cultivate. Parcel Beast, okay. We're probably going to lose this game to that opening. Hmm. Okay, so if he does have Lotus Cobra, then I do want something to go ahead and continue to slow him down earlier in the game. I'm going to counter that. That's a pretty good combo, Parcel Beast plus uh, on a Lotus Cobra. Hmm. I'm going to go for a Gadwick for one here to try to get flowing into like an answer for that. There's an Elspeth Conqueror's death. That's good. Okay, he does have Genesis Ultimatum. Let's see what he gets here. That's enough that probably if I don't draw Wrath, we're dead. concede to that hmm. um all right so i definitely want some extra early game interaction against this nonsense uh if he is gonna try to turbo with lotus cobra which i probably should have been able to guess but it's wasn't 100 percent. i just I didn't feel like it was 100 percent uh i may not want the reason borrowers let's see what i definitely want the bone crushers because they'll help there um we want the negates at least two of them because of that um we can just go three negates i think that makes more sense this kills all your small dudes none of my none of my damage based removal is going to kill your bigger guys anyway and essence scatter is nice I really want to board out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirty-one. Thirty-one mana sources. I can board out the Dwari disruptions. I'd rather not. Let's cut a Dwari disruption and one other card for a uh for a for the two essence scatters, because I do want the essence scatters. 
what are we going to cut? Let's cut... Do I want to cut one of the expensive cards? No, I don't really want to cut one of the expensive cards. We will cut a Gadwick. We will cut a Gadwick. This. Now I have two defensive spells to kill early stuff, which makes me much happier. I'd rather that be a Narset or something like that. We have a second color of whatever we need in the Fabled Passage. which is looking a lot like a white mana. If he plays a two drop here, I'm just gonna bone pressure it and then play the bone pressure, whatever it is, yep. You feel good about your hand? It's okay right now. Um, this is a hand that could go south very quickly because uh, it has a limited plan against a lot of what he's going to be trying to do in in, in the future. Hmm. Um, so he shouldn't crack his fetch here unless he has one uh, something for one to play. Um, oh, I should have played the Ondu inversion. That was stupid. As a land, that's a mistake. That could really come back to kill me. Uh, I'm going to sorcery speed this because I don't want to give him the opportunity to crack his Evolving Wilds next turn for uh, for a mana. Hmm. I guess, in theory, I could wait, but he's probably going to do... That's probably the first thing he would do before casting a spell. So there's not a whole lot of logic to waiting on that. I'm still representing a two-mana counter spell here. Um... Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. He's going to make a bunch of 1-1s. One and now I have to draw for an untapped land. I do get it, so I get lucky. So I, I didn't have to put myself in a situation where I needed to get lucky to draw an untapped land because I could have played the undo inversion last turn. Turns out that I run well, so it's not going to uh, really hurt me here. But that could have been really bad. Because next turn, he can he can play um, a landfall guy and make multiple copies of Scoop Swarm and force me to wrath his board, which puts me in a completely different position that's not nearly as good. Hmm. I mean, I still draw a card off of my wrath because of the Bone Crusher Giant. Um, but yeah, something like a Migratory Greathorn here is going to... Um, is going to really put me in a in a little bit of a spot. So I'm going to wrath here. Um, I'm going to wrath here because it draws me a card, and it blows and it blows up his potential. Um, I'm then play the Ondu Sky Ruins to prepare to Gadwick uh, next turn for three because I'm getting the uh, the. Um, the bone crusher back so the boat getting the bone crusher back off the elspeth conquer's death is the sort of push over point i get enough value off of this at this point that it's worth it to burn the wrath um oh he's gonna he's gonna kill my elspeth conquer's death okay that is nice Still gonna draw three cards and see where we go there. All right, how are you feeling? Um, this could be a tight real quick. Um, I'm confident that this is winnable, but uh, this definitely is a game that could get real tight real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, just because he has. Uh, 
he has that 440 as a Lotus Cobra in play, and there's always like a potential for Lotus Cobra to go wild. If he attacks here, this is good for me because then I can counter attack. Mm. Um, we're gonna get a blue source. Oh, and I have all my blue sources, so this has to get a mountain. Yep, I only have one more basic left. Okay. Um, we're definitely gonna attack for three. And then I have Bone Crusher plus. So let's see. If I cast a Dream Trawler, I don't have any defensive mana up, and he's very much on Genesis Ultimatum, which I have an answer for. So yeah, we're just gonna go for uh, Bone Crusher plus Win. Because the Gadwin can tap down Starix. Uh, that is fine, actually. I could theoretically kill it in response, but I'm not going to, because that will incentivize him to attack with it. And he's very unlikely to go ahead and... Okay. Good thing I have the Cinderclasm. Not gonna attack, huh? Uh, I'm gonna let him attack first. Hmm. Okay, so he's not going to attack. That makes sense. We're just gonna clear away his blockers here. Yeah, your landfall trigger doesn't help you here. this is game yeah yep. Ooh, good job good job that was that yeah. was <laughs> i was nervous for you yeah um so you know i i had answers to most of what he was trying to do in my hand with the cinderclasm and the negate and everything and so i was like i feel pretty safe that whatever big thing you have upcoming i can handle um and then the two damage off of the Bone Crusher plus the three damage uh, from Gadwick, uh, because Gadwick can tap a guy, um, basically made it so that he was very likely to die. Well, everyone, thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. Uh, thank you, Ching Song, for showing us this. This is uh, this is pretty exciting. This was a, I love watching these matches. You know, it's um, I know people tend to compare them to sports matches like football and baseball, and it, to me, it's just like that because it's always to the wire sometimes. Um, but uh, yes, let us know what you think of these. Uh, what would you think of this deck in the comments below? And um, yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna talk some more stuff coming up. Stay tuned.